And we are back with part five of this week's reading of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version, TLV. And we have now completed the second book of Samuel. It's We're just moving along here with the Nevim, with the prophets. And next week, we're going to be beginning um, Kings, which is the second of the double books. Um, Kings is divided into 1st Kings and 2nd Kings. So next week we're actually going to be doing um, about half of um, the first book of Kings. We're going to do the introduction and um, chapters 1 through 12. And actually this, the, the following week after that we're, is only um, chapters 13 to 22. So um, there's 22 chapters in the first book of Kings, but a lot of information, um, some of which that you have had in, in the first and second book of Samuel, of course, but um, we're going to actually get more into um, the Kings and um, starting with Solomon as well. So you get to, to know who Solomon is and how rich he becomes and it's going to be very interesting as well. So that's where we're moving with that. And um, from from then, we're, we'll do the second book of Kings, and that's going to be about two weeks. Then we're going to be spending quite a bit of time in the book of Isaiah, which um, Isaiah is known as a major prophet. Um, and there's it's just a, a, a pretty large book. It's not that the minor prophets were any less important because all of them were important. And all of the prophets, when we get into talking about the prophets, all fit in somewhere to the to the books of history. Um, that's where, you know, they, they all fit in. So it will be very interesting. And Isaiah has some very interesting prophecies. There's prophecies of Messiah within Isaiah. Uh, both the first and second coming. So we've got some exciting things coming up. And we will be um, actually, as we're ending this week's lesson, I'm looking to see where we're at here. I, I record these ahead of time. So this will be the 27th week that we have been doing uh, readings from the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version, TLV. So we are already in the second year, you know, we've already done six months, which is a half a year. And um, so we've got a ways to go with the, with the, with this version of the Bible. So I mean, it, it's easy to say that we may actually be uh, completing this. Um, probably uh, we're not going to be completing this in, in another half a year. It may take us a year and a half, actually, in total to do this. And that is wonderful, actually, because we have taken our time going through this and everything is archived. So if you had you wanted to go back and listen to anything, you have the ability to do that uh, on either YouTube or GodTube. It is available for you. Um, and Again, um, if you have found that this is a blessing to you, um, please um, hit subscribe and you can also hit notifications to see when um, um, I upload them because I upload them a lot. A lot of times, um, well, I have to upload them actually prior to posting them on Facebook uh, because they have to be ready. And there's a whole process that I do. Uh, to get them ready. Uh, right now, as I'm recording them, they will be in an MP3 format, and then I upload them into a Tunes to Tube uh, program that actually takes it straight to YouTube. And then from YouTube, I have to upload to an MP4 format, um, and because that's the requirement of GodTube. So there's a lot that goes on here. So, but once they're uploaded, they're available for whoever is a subscriber to actually get a head start on them. And some, some of the parts are, you know, to each week can be rather long. So to get a head start and actually um, digest everything um, is a good thing. So I'm going to move on now with the altar call. And it is very important um, to 
to do these altar calls because I also realize that there's many people that um, come across these videos and they may not be saved. And I want that ability to be there um, for them as they're listening to the word of God, um, to know that they um, can have eternal life through Yeshua. And salvation can only be achieved through Yeshua. And salvation is deliverance from sin and the consequences. And the consequences of sin is actually death, eternal death and separation from God. And when we pass from this world, we're either going to be in heaven or we're going to be in hell. Um, there's no in between. You do not, there, you know, there's no such thing as purgatory as some religions will teach you. And no one can buy you out of hell. Um, so all the riches in the world is not going to do you any good. Once you pass from this world, um, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, you are not going to uh, go to heaven. And um, that is just the plain and simple truth. Our Lord and Savior Yeshua said, you cannot enter heaven unless you are born again. And he didn't say born physically. He meant born spiritually. So he came specifically to save and redeem the world of sin um, and his life, you know, his death is not in vain and it would be in vain if we were given other paths. There are not many paths to God. There are not many paths to heaven. That, that, that is just absurd to even believe that uh, and, and for people to even think that because then Yeshua's death would have been in vain, and it certainly is not in vain, for God sent his only son, his only begotten son, to redeem the world. So Romans 3, chapter, Romans 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is not one that has not been without sin, except for Yeshua. Everyone else that has walked the face of this earth is, is born into sin. Romans 5, verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us. In, while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. And 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And as we saw David and David's repentant heart towards God, um, this is how we need to approach for forgiveness. And Yeshua is actually died to clear us from sins. We just need to go to him for forgiveness. And when you get forgiveness, you don't turn back and do the very same things, thinking, yeah, well, he'll keep forgiving me. Um, that's not how you repent of sins. Yeshua said to the woman um, who they were going to stone because she had committed adultery, he forgave her and um, he said, go and sin no more. So by repenting, you're, you're also working to turn your life around. And how to do that, we ask the Holy Spirit to come and guide our lives. And then also get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation. And I'll talk about that um, in just a bit. If you are ready, if you have never accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, and you desire to do so, um, you can say this simple prayer with me. Father God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. I cannot do it myself. And I realize that I can't save myself. I'm human. I, have, I don't have that ability. And you sent your son to do that for me. And I realize that I will never be able to come to heaven because I can't stand before you because you're a holy God and you cannot accept sin to stand before you. And that is why you sent Yeshua, your son, to die for that very sin. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you, Yeshua. 
for dying for, for our sins, for my sin. And I'm asking for your forgiveness. I'm asking and I'm, I'm wanting to repent and turn away from sin. I believe that you came and you died on a cross for that very purpose. I believe that you were buried and you rose again. And I believe you're sitting at the right hand of Father God right now. I believe you're coming again to rule and reign. And I want to be with you. I want to know that I have eternal life with you and that I will walk with you in eternity. Thank you, Yeshua. I declare that you are my Lord and Savior. I declare that you're my King of Kings, the only one that I will bow to from here on out. And I accept the gift of salvation that you're offering me. And I'm not perfect, Lord. And I'm asking you to send your Holy Spirit to live inside of me, to guide me in all the way, all of your ways for the rest of my life, to guide my path so that I can stay on the straight and narrow path with you. I believe through you and you alone, I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm born again, and I'm set free from sin and the consequences of sin. And I believe I'm healed. And now of health, I am healthy of mind, body, and soul. In Yeshua, Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. And if you have said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. And I'm going to encourage that you find a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation. And when I say Bible-based, I mean one that is actually reading from the Bible and taking their teachings from the Bible and that you can go to the Bible and you can discern and you can confirm that, yes, this is biblical teaching. It is so very important. It's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can tell if somebody is just doing um, motivational speaking, um, the power of positive thinking or whatever um, is just that. Um, sometimes it's known as wishcraft, <laughs> manifesting things. Um, no, we don't manifest things. You know, that, that, that borders on witchcraft, wishcraft, witchcraft, whatever. Um, that's that that is not biblical. Um, so I'm, 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 there's so many things that are out there that are very deceptive. Um, we need to look at what is biblical. So um, we need to be Bereans. And the Bereans actually uh, would go to the scrolls. They would read from the scrolls to discern what. Um, they were being told was was biblical and scriptural and that is something that we need to do too and to be able to take it you know to the holy spirit and use that gift of discernment to discern um what is biblical and what is of god because we're living in such tumultuous tumultuous times uh, where we're constantly being lied to um, and we really, you know, thank God that he has sent his Holy Spirit to be our comforter during times like this, because we can turn to him uh, and we need to turn to him for discernment, for truth. And our God cannot lie, so uh, he won't lie. Um, the only liar is the devil himself. The devil is the father of lies and deception. So we need to we need to be able to discern. And that is what I'm going to say about that. And and I would also encourage that you get a Bible of your own, um, a hard copy that can be passed down. There is going to come a time where there is a famine, and it is a famine for the Word of God, because hard copies are going to be hard to come by. And there may come a time in the future that there are no Bible apps. Now we are blessed with with all kinds of, of material. Um, we've got the internet, we've got, we've got biblical teachings, we've got Bible apps such as Bible Hub, Bible Gateway. I would encourage you now, actually, while there is time to go on to Bible Hub, Bible Gateway, and check out the different versions, see which ones resonate with you, and get a hard copy of the Bible.
if not in your lifetime, it may be in your your in in future generations that uh, it may be very hard to come by, but at least somebody can pass down that family Bible. So now I'm going to end this week's reading, this week's teaching, and I'm going to encourage you to look up Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. That is where the Aaronic blessing is found, priestly blessing, or also known as the Aaronic benediction. And we say benediction because uh, church services, synagogue services end with this very blessing. So if you are born again, if you are a child of God, this is a blessing for you as well. It is carried on. Um, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons to gather my children. I want to place my name on them and I want to give them my blessing. And in Hebrew, it goes like this. Ivarekaka Adonai ve'ishmareka ye'er Adonai panavaleka ve'kuneka. Ista Adonai Ponavaleka Veasamleka Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, his peace, his shalom. Amen and amen. And thank you for listening and have a wonderful, wonderful week. And we'll see you next week. Beginning on the beginning with First Kings, the introduction and chapters one through twelve. God bless.